Hey folks, welcome to Henco and thanks for watching our videos. Today we're going to be talking about the flow check valve, specifically how to unassemble and rebuild the check valve. To learn how we got the check valve to this stage, please refer to our previous video, Disassembling the Intense Fire. The most typical failure modes of a check valve uh, is typically an overstroke, that is where your pump strokes faster to one side uh, versus the other, and most typically you're going to need a repair kit to uh, fix that issue as seen here. There will be instances where the check valve body itself is bad. At that stage you'll have to replace the entire check valve body. You can do that by doing just the body or the entire check valve assembly. All right, let's get started. To begin you're going to need an 8 millimeter wrench and you're going to begin by putting that wrench to the screw, check valve screw. Once you get it loose, undo it with your hand and what's going to come loose is going to be the low pressure poppet, the screw and the poppet retainer. On the outside, you're going to have your high-pressure seat, and in the adapter, you're going to have your outlet poppet and this spring. Go ahead and set all of these aside for now. All right, next we're going to go ahead and take a pick uh, that we have here and use that to take off the low-pressure O-rings that are sitting in the outside diameter of the check valve. Go ahead and take those off, and at this point, they will not be good. We get a new set in the check valve repair kit. Thus, you can throw these away. All right, next we're going to move along and we're going to start cleaning the face of the check valve, uh, especially where the uh, hoop from the uh, seal uh, makes an indent against the face of the check valve and where some of that blue goop is uh, burned off and kind of left some marks. Go ahead and use Scotch Brite, thumb, and uh, scrub as good as you can. All right, once we're done scrubbing that face, we're going to move on to the output side of the adapter, uh, the inside where the high pressure seat was sitting. We're going to want to take some paper towels, uh, roll them up as good as we can, and go ahead and start scrubbing the inside of the check valve where that high pressure seat sits. Uh, also trying to inspect to see if there's any cracks. Uh, as we spoke earlier, when they do fail, that's typically where a check valve fails, is on that output side where the exit hole is. Next, one of the more important things we have to do with the check valve is uh, lap the check valve. As you can see here, the face of the check valve has an indent from the low pressure poppet that you'll see here. Uh, so one of the next things we're going to have to do is get this set up and bring it over to the lapping bench. Every manufacturer is a little different. We prefer to use a granite plate with lapping paper. Uh, Flow typically sends out a piece of glass, floating glass. Uh, as you can see here, we use uh, lapping paper, tape it down, Typical lapping procedure is to do either a figure eight. I personally like to do a back and forth with a uh, 90 degree twist of whatever it is I'm lapping. Just for me, it tends to work better. And then every so often, you're going to want to uh, take the check valve off of the plate and inspect that face. And you'll see over time, you're going to uh, get that mirror finish. And you can see how deep of gouges we have here. As such, we've got to continue to lap. Lapping can actually take quite a few minutes, so we're going to speed up the video here. But at the very end, what you're going to look for is a perfectly mirror finish with absolutely no marks from the low pressure poppet. Once you've achieved that, you might want to clean off the check valve face a little bit, but basically we're ready for reassembly. Now let's talk about a check valve repair kit. Typically you're going to get the O-rings that go on the outside diameter of the check valve, high pressure seat, spring, output poppet. On the inlet side, you're going to have the inlet poppet, retainer, and screw. Let's learn about how to put these together. All right, let's start with the inlet poppet. We're going to take that. It basically looks like a hat. You want the stepped side facing up at you, putting it over the inlet hole, which is the darkest hole. Next, you're going to go ahead and put on the poppet retainer, threading the screw hand tight at this point into the high pressure hole. Again, using your eight millimeter wrench, you want to hold on to the body and go ahead and snug that up as tight as you can. All right, next we're going to move on to the O-rings on the outside diameter of the check valves. You can use a variety of greases. We like to use a high vacuum grease, but you can use a uh, Parker O-ring lube. Works as well. Spin the O-ring through your fingers, ensuring to get lubricant on all sides of the o-ring. Putting the o-rings on can be a little bit difficult but go ahead and push them over the diameter 
of the check valve. I always like to put the uh, first O-ring in the first groove, making it a little bit easier to get that second one on. All right, once the uh, O-rings are on, we're going to go ahead and move to the high pressure side of the check valve. At this point, you can go ahead and get your blue goop ready and your output adapter. And we are going to go ahead and put a little bit of blue goop on our fingers and get ready to put that onto the high pressure seat. Again, putting it on the face of the seat that has the chamfer on it. The flat side does not need any blue goop on it. Go ahead and insert the high pressure seat, blue goop face in first. Go ahead and use your finger and push that all the way in and set that aside for now. All right, and the very last thing we have to do to get our check valve ready before we uh, put it back into the machine is take our output adapter and we're going to use our spring and go ahead and put that spring inside and then take your output adapter, making sure that the flat surface facing up and go ahead and give it a couple pushes and make sure it moves freely. And that's all for now, folks. That's how you rebuild a check valve for flow. To see how we actually put it back in the intensifier, watch our final video on this set, which is the complete reassembly of the flow intensifier.